Hi, uh, my name is Milorad, and uh, today I want to discuss changes to archery and other missile weapons in Dominion 6 and the new spells that support archers or protect against them. In uh, Dominion 5, some uh, you know very high level players who I was not, uh, but they would say that archers were bad, you know, almost all, almost all of the time, right? Um, I always thought this was a little overstated. Uh, because, you know, not everyone had air magic to do arrow fend or other counters, right? Uh, I think with Dominion 6, uh, if you want to... Overall conclusion at the beginning of the video is I believe the changes in Dominion 6... Uh, my impression is that archers will be effective for a bigger part of the game. Like, I don't think it's that they're now superior to melee but they're just that the archers will be more effective for longer okay so what we're gonna do is talk about mechanical changes first then we're gonna go into offensive spells that boost archery and then defensive spells that uh, go against archery right so we're gonna break it up like that okay uh, so okay first uh, I'm showing here longbowmen from middle-aged men you can immediately see if you're a veteran of the series that something looks different, right? It's because they changed strength scaling uh, to now be one third, or sorry, to be half from one third. Uh, so what that means is that all bows now do more base damage because of strength, uh, half a strength being added, right? Now, that's not the full picture though. Um, well, before I talk about that, so you can see like 15 damage for the longbow, um, cro uh, short bow is 11, and, and most uh, composite bows for human style units are going to be 13. Uh, but to go back to this, uh, you can't just look at the strength changes in a vacuum, right? You have to look at it with changes to how they calculate piercing damage. So um, here, in Dominions 5, Piercing reduced armor by 20%. In Dominions uh, 6, it reduces by 15. However, what they don't tell you in the manual is that they, I believe, I don't know for sure, because I'm not like one of those people who goes and looks in the code of the game. I don't know how to do that. But from looking at combat logs, when you, you know, when you're watching a battle and you could click on a unit and press V, uh, you can look at the combat rolls it appears that they also change how they do rounding. So, um, you know, you would say, okay, like, okay, 20% versus 15 is not a big difference, but now they round up, right? So let's say you have a 10 armor in Dominions, uh, your target has 10 armor. In Dominions 5, 20% reduction will be eight. Now, in Dominions 6, you would think 8.5, uh, 15% reduction would be rounded down to eight. However, they changed it, I believe, from what I from what I've looked at, to be rounded up to nine. So really, it's worse than what it seems to be. Like the manual does not explain this, right? So what it actually means is the piercing damage is worse overall, and that's for all. Uh, piercing weapons, not just arrows, right? But like all arrows are by their definition piercing weapons. So yes, archers have more damage because of the strength, but piercing is worse. Um, somebody I'm sure will put together like a chart. I'm not one of those uh, math people, but what my intuition says is that archers will be better against low, even better than they were before, against low protection targets, whereas against high protection targets, they'll be worse, right? Or about the same, depending, there's a gradient in between, right? Um, so yes, uh, they were already effective against low armor in Dominions 5, but they'll be even more effective now because of the strength changes, okay? Now, 
This means that, uh, oh, sorry, I want to talk about slingers now. Okay, so this also affects slings. But uh, you can see here, this guy has 11 strength divided by 2 is 5.5, uh, but it rounds down because if it rounded up, it would be 11. So, you know, it's confusing because sometimes uh, Illwinter rounds up and sometimes they round down. So there's no like set rule for how they calculate rounding. So slings have changed. Yes, they have been improved from the strength, but uh, blood damage has also been affected. So in Dominions 5, head hits with blunt did 50% more damage after protection was subtracted. So that meant the sling would almost always be useless against armor, right? So you have an 8. So this guy in Dominions 5 would be 8 damage because of one third strength. So 8 damage blunt. If you have any kind of helmet, basically, it would almost never go through. Uh, you could get very lucky with a DRN roll, but almost never it will go through, right? Now, in Dominion 6, the tooltip says damage is increased by 25% before armor is deducted, which makes sense when you think about it. If you were wearing a helmet and somebody hits you with a hammer in the head, it's going to hurt even with the helmet on, right? So now... Is 25% damage before protection is subtracted. So he will be doing 12 against the helmet with the head hit. So what that means is that he can defeat some helmets, right? Like a leather helmet or stuff like that. Uh, so this is a buff. However, you know, it's not very relevant because head hits are only 10% of the time. Um, so Yes, slingers were buffed in Dominion 6, but they're still not a great unit because uh, head hits are not common. So, you know, still not great, but less shit. Um, okay, so now uh, I want to talk about javelins. So javelins were affected by the changes to Pierce, just like all other piercing weapons but they already scale one to one for strength um, so nothing else has changed about them so in essence uh, they are debuffed by the changes to pierce damage uh, it's not significant but it is uh, still a debuff uh, also because strength scaling on arrows on bows has been improved they are now worse than uh, archers, right? So in some cases, right? So for example, uh, so you can see here, the short bow is now doing almost as much damage as the javelin and the composite is doing more. And then you have like the really high damage on the great bow. So, you know, because the javelin has such a low range and only two ammunition, it's less competitive than before. Now, in most cases, it doesn't matter because you're not buying these troops for the javelin. You're buying them because they can also fight in melee, right? So it's not that significant of a difference, and they still scale one-to-one -one for strength, so they accept better uh, buffs from uh, strength uh, spells, right? Like the strength of giants and all that, right? Okay, uh, crossbows are the big losers, in my opinion, from the changes. Okay, so crossbows are still one-third scaling. They don't get the double, or sorry, they don't get the half scaling from bows. But because all pierce weapons have been debuffed slightly, they do less damage now, in essence. Now, they're still useful because you still have the... 50% reduction from armor piercing, but overall piercing weapons are worse. This does not mean there are no use cases for crossbows, obviously not, but they have been the least, uh, the, the, they've probably suffered the most in the transition to Dominion 6. 
Okay. Um, okay. So now we'll go, let's go back to the ball for a second. This is a new tag called Mobile Archer, and I have a demonstration battle. I want to show kind of how it works. But uh, what it does is it allows now units with this tag can shoot while moving. So you can do fire and keep distance better. Okay. So I'm going to show you a demonstration battle. Okay, so I have these camels riders because they have this tag. I have them in the front on fire and keep distance. Okay. Hold on, sorry. We're going to see it come into effect in a little bit here. Okay, so now... I'm going to pause for a second. You'll be able to see, I'm going to do it slower. These guys, as they're moving back, will be briefly, their model will turn around and shoot. Watch. So you can see they turn around and shoot um, without having to stop for a full round to fire. So what I'm doing in this case is because they're set to fire and keep distance, they are baiting this uh, enemy squad of uh, Vinemen. So they're going to follow them because they're probably set on attack closest because these guys are in the front. Now they're moving all the way to the back, which means now there's less Vinemen uh, fighting the Avites, right? So here we go. We'll continue watching. I'll put on a grid so you can see what's going to end up happening. Okay, so they get now to the edge of the battlefield and stop. Uh, they don't continue to run away to the sides. So this has some utility, but you can see the limitations, right? So if these were, let's say, much more dangerous unit like a heavy cav they would follow them all the way to the back and then these guys would get wrecked when they get stuck against the edge of the map okay so um anyway you can see that like these guys are routing because they were overwhelmed with too many units like this is not a very strong in the independent population type, but you know these guys can sometimes with the put the guys to sleep and then the vine men overwhelm them with too many numbers. But in this case, I was able to use fire and keep distance to lure all the vine men over here. And they win the battle. And then you can see as they're moving forward, they're most of them are out of ammunition by now, but the ones who still have ammo are firing as they move forward. Okay, so in this situation, you know, you could still do this in Dominions 5. However, it is less effective because they would have to stop to shoot. And it could mean that the pursuing unit could catch up to them. This way, for slower units, we'll never catch up to them uh, until they reach the end of the battle map now with the fast units like a cavalry they can maybe catch up to them but the camels have a very high speed um, so what this allows you to do is bait uh, with fire and keep distance but and create like a channel to draw enemies to the back um, but because your guys will get stuck you want to have other things nearby on the sides to attack the uh, unit that was baited to follow your mobile archers. Um, so that's a tactical consideration now that's easier in Dominion 6 with this tag. This is not a common tag. I look to see not that many nations have it. Um, besides the camels in Nabal and Ubar, you also have Sauromachia, horse archers, Tianchi in all eras. 
uh, the moose for Veti and Jotun. Uh, and there's a couple others that I can't think of right now. Oh yeah, elephant archers as well. Uh, so the guys sitting on top of the elephants all have a mobile archer tag. So that allows them to shoot while the elephant is moving forward. Um, so again, we don't know yet how impactful this will be in competitive play. Uh, but it, it's interesting. I think it allows you to do things that you couldn't do as easily in Dominions 5. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, exit out of this. Um, okay. So what I want to do now is talk about mounts. So, you know, in Dominion 6, we added horses now, or mounts. And uh, this relates to archers because now archers can help fight things they were less effective against in Dominions 5 because they can shoot the horse. So let's look for example Vanheim. Okay. This is a dangerous unit. Everyone who's played Dominions 5 knows that. Uh, you know, very high defense, uh, very fast, <coughs> very dangerous unit. Excuse me. <coughs> In Dominions 5, Archer would not be very useful against this, except to uh, get rid of the Glamour. So, like, he gets hit with the bow, he loses the Glamour, but after that, you have to contend with a shield and 13 protection. Uh, so, Archers are not super helpful. However, in Dominion 6, now they have a horse as a separate unit, and the way it works is that 50% of the time with archery, with missile weapons, uh, the mount is targeted. So, in this case, the mount has only four protection. So, a couple of arrows hit this and it's dead. Uh, compare that to 13 protection with the shield. So, now, archers can shoot the horse. The guy falls off. Uh, when you fall off a mount in Dominion 6, you take a armor negating damage open-ended roll according to the manual so they will also take some damage when they fall and then after he falls this guy is less scary for several reasons so he loses the three percent uh, sorry the three uh, bonus from being mounted his combat speed will go down uh, to whatever he is walking I think it's like 11 and more importantly, he only has one attack. He loses the attack from the horse. And then, let's say this guy survives the battle, because he's still decent, especially if he's blessed. Uh, he survives the battle, right? But, now, because his mount is dead, he has to walk back to the capital to get another mount. And he has to pass a morale check. Uh, he could desert along the way so by shooting the horse because the horse is much weaker the archers have utility without exposing themselves to melee where they will get crushed right so there are other examples that's the most apparent however if you look at uh, Tian Chi for example um, here's another example of when the horse has weaker uh, protection, see three head, eight body, than the rider. So the rider has, you know, full scale mal, 15, half helmet, 18, and a shield. Uh, not a very high parry, but still, he will be, the rider will survive arrows much better than his horse. So again, this is a situation in which a archery can be used to counter the cavalry. Also this one. Now this one has a little better uh, but still, you know, 12 with no shield is more vulnerable to arrows than the rider, who has a full shield and good armor. Now, some horses, like the Red Guard, they have a very heavy 15, full barding. Oh, that's interesting. He loses his coloring on the model. Anyway, um... In this case, the horse has such a heavy barding, it's unlikely to be shot out by 
arrows. Um, in this case, archers are worse, right? Because in Dominions 5, they will be always shooting this combined unit. Now they have a 50% chance to hit the horse. So it's even harder to get rid of this, uh, to kill the whole unit, right? But I think overall, the, ex the addition of the mount mechanic system makes archers better against certain units that they would not have been useful against in Dominions 5. Okay, so now I want to talk about offensive spells. Um, so almost all the new, almost all the spells that impact archery are in enchantment. Okay, so first we're going to talk about familiar ones from fire. Okay, so, you know, we remember, all of us remember, of course, if you've played Dominions 5, Flaming Arrows in Dominions 5 was at enchantment 4, and it required 4 fire, 1 gem, and it would impact the whole battlefield. Now that's no longer the case. So now you have uh, three different tiers of um, ar Flaming Arrow spells, right? So you have level 2, you have this one that's AoE 1, but it's available earlier for 2. Uh, so, you know, AoE 1's not very large, but for some nations, like Machaka, you can fit five of the pygmies in one square. So now you're getting, in this situation, for um, 20 fatigue, you're getting five short bows that are shooting for eight AP fire damage, right? Um, and then a level five, you're getting uh, AOE 20, which is fairly large, 20 plus, um, for one fire gem. So any fire two can just cast the Phoenix power, become fire three and cast it with a gem and it will affect 20 squares. And then at the highest level, level seven, this is similar now to the old flaming arrows because it's four fire, but now it's two gems for the whole battlefield. Um, but it's pushed back all the way to enchantment seven. So, you know, fall flaming arrows would fall off. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> flaming arrows would fall off relatively soon in Dominions Five. By this being pushed back to a further level of research, it's yet to be seen how effective it will be. Uh, I have not had the playtime yet to say definitively how I think about this. Uh, I think overall, though, this is a uh, debuff to Flaming Arrows from Dominions 5 to 6. Um, one consideration here is that because the fire damage is separate role from um, it's a separate role, this is still effective, you know, on Slingers, so it maybe it gives Slingers more value earlier because of Ignite Arrows. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about nature. These are new. This was not available in Dominions 5 Vanilla. <laughs> so you have three tiers, again, in Venom Arrows. Uh, so Enchantment 2 for one nature, AoE 1. So this is more accessible than the Fire 1 because it's only one nature. So this gives your one nature guys something to do. Uh, and then you have Serpent Fang Arrows at Enchantment 5, 20 AoE for one nature. Uh, I would argue that this is less accessible than the Fire 1, right? Because the Fire 1, uh, Fire 2 can cast Phoenix Power, and it's much easier to get the temporary gems, items for fire, because the fire in a jar is available at Construction 2. Or, I mean, in 3, they changed the construction. So, construction 3, it, the fire in a jar is available earlier, and it's easier to make. Uh, in order to get temporary nature, you need... Um, oh, gosh, what is it called? 
it's in uh, construction five. It looks like an S. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Um, but it gives you, it's a miscellaneous item that gives you two nature, but it costs 15 gems to make. Um, so in this case, it's less accessible to use Serpent Fang arrows. You have to bring gems, unless you're willing to make that more expensive item than the fire in the jar. And then you have Hail of Serpent Fangs. Um, this one is for nature, two gems, a whole battlefield. Um, some, you know, if you're a Earth 1, Nature 3, you can cast the Strength of Gaia, and then it will bring you up to Nature 4. And then with the two gems, you can cast this, uh, impact the whole battlefield. Um, so, or some nations can communion, right? So this is how you would get this, but for Nature is pretty high. Anyway, so what this does is five a uh, armor negating poison damage if wounded. What it it creates the same icon as the flaming arrows, but green on the archer. Um, this I tested it with middle age machaka um, on the guys with the poison bow. Your mages will cast it on them. However, if you look at the combat logs, it does not appear to do anything. It does not stack, right? It's not like you get to 10 armor negating poison damage. It's still 5. So even though they will cast it on the guys with the poison bow, it doesn't seem to do anything. I could be wrong. Maybe someone can correct me. But from my testing, it doesn't appear to do anything. Anyway, um, why this is effective is they have changed things about how poison works, right? So now poison also debuffs your stats. If you have um, poison damage stacked on you equal to your health, you now get a 25% reduction to your attack and defense. If it, it can go all the way up to 50. So for example, if you get hit with a death poison, and you're a human, uh, you actually lose 50% of your attack and defense. Uh, that's the highest you can go because you have three times your uh, total HP in poison damage stacked on you. Now, you would say, well, why does that matter? Because he's going to die anyway. But, you know, uh, poison is damage over time. You don't take all the damage at once. So, in Dominions 5, people often said that poison was not always worth it on especially poison weapons bless because especially in melee the person would die before the poison killed them now there's more utility to poison because of the debuffing to attack and defense so what this can allow you to do um is it oh, it also goes down sorry so like yes you can do 25 percent but if you have let's say five poison damage stacked and you have 10 health points you will actually get minus 13 percent to your attack and defense so for most units it will be like a minus one minus one now this goes away as the poison goes away but it is a debuff for several rounds um, so there is more utility now to poison so the way this works is your unit your archer has to do damage and then there's a separate role for poison, right? So it'll be 5 plus DRN versus your opponent's poison resistance plus DRN. So most units will have zero. Um, so it's possible they can, with the way DRN works, it's possible that they can negate this even if they have no poison resistance. But it's also possible for your archer with the poison arrows to do more than 5 poison damage to the opponent. So this is better than it looks just by reading the description here. It does not mean you will do five. It could be actually more than that. Um, and this could still be used against Cetis troops, for example. They all have a five, um, five or more poison resistance base. They can. This can still defeat it. I mean, it's not likely, but it can because there's a DRN on top of it. Okay, so 
I think that this is... Uh, oh, yeah, one more other thing. This is less effective on slings than fire because it has to do damage. So the sling is less likely to do damage in the first place than arrows. So this will not be as effective on slings. The fire is better on slings because the fire damage is a separate roll. You don't have to do damage in order to trigger the fire damage. But for the poison bows, you do. Okay, um, now air. Now, if you remember, wind guide used to be an alteration. Um, it was, right? I believe so, yes. Um, I think it was alteration four. But what it is now is all the precision boosting spells under air are all in enchantment and they have different tiers, right? So you have here um, true shot warriors. Oh, wait, sorry. There's a lower level here. True shot. This is similar to aim. It's very low range. Area of effect one adds precision. And then you have a true shot warriors. This is AOE 20. Um, yeah, AOE 20 for one gem. And then you have the wind guide uh, for three. So now it's harder to cast. But it also negates the penalty from storm, which it did not do in... Uh, it did not do in Dominions uh, 5. Now, there's also a new spell for, inch, uh, for under air that gives... Uh, essentially, like, if you remember in Dominions 5, there was a Far Shot Bless. And nobody ever used it because it was trash. So, for two air Bless points, it will give your uh, sacred archers more range. And like nobody ever used that. It wasn't effective. So now you can actually put it on non-sacreds using um, far flight, right? So air one guys can put it AOE one. And then you have um, a larger AOE for gems. And then you have um, this one that's a battlefield wide, okay? So, I'm not sure how I feel about this because, okay, let's talk about how they've changed the battle sizes, okay? So, in order to appreciate the discussion for this, we have to look at now the battles, right? So, um, hold on one second. Okay, so, oops. All right, so the reason I'm showing this screen is I want to talk about how the battles, um, how the um, battle uh, setup has changed, right? So the full battle size in Dominion 6 is 100 squares long by 50 squares wide. Okay, this is bigger than Dominion 6. So now this setup box is 25 squares, approximately. Uh, and then you have uh, 10 blank ones behind you that you cannot set up in. And then there's a uh, enemy has the same. So there's approximately 30 squares in between you. So what you can do now um, is you could put, for example, your guys all the way in the front. And then with uh, the way Far Flight works is it adds... Uh, range right so for example now the short bow will be 52 because it adds 50 percent so the short bow will be 52 the composite bow will be 60 and then like a long bow will be 75 uh, or sorry a long bow or great bow will be 75 right and then there's also a long bow and crossbow in between right so what it means now is in theor theoretically, these guys set all the way to the front. Let me find where I was. Here we go. Okay, so these guys set all the way to the front. If they had far flight cast on them, they can reach all the way to the back of the enemy squares for their setup. 
How it, so in theory, you could hit all the way the rear of your enemy um, enemies set up on the first turn. If you have, well, on the second turn after they cast the buff on them. So this sounds good, but there's lots of limitations because first of all, you know, you can't order these guys to fire rear. You see, like you can't do that. So the, first of all, you can't order them to shoot that now. But then, you know, you could do fire none and hope that they will randomly target one of the enemy squads that's all the way in the rear. But it's not reliable. And then, uh, you know, to make matters worse is that at that range, the precision is absolutely terrible. Um, so like this guy, for example, 10 precision, he's not going to hit anything at that range reliably. Um, precision drops off significantly at longer range. So, you know, giving this guy 60 range is only going to make his precision even worse. Um, however, with battles being larger than they were in Dominions 5 on average, um, you know, accuracy matters less when there's tons of opponents because every arrow that goes up has to go somewhere. So there's a possibility it will hit something. Um, so, you know, you could, in theory, have uh, like a disposable squad in the front of archers on the first turn, have a mage here cast a far flight, and hope that they hit something in your enemy's back line. All you need to do is hit, get lucky and hit a couple of mages to interrupt spells, or if you hit like one of their communion slaves and it throws off the whole communion. So there is value to this, but there are lots of limitations. So you shouldn't get too excited about this new spell. Um, okay, so that's all the ones in enchantment. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, earth. We need to talk about earth spells, of course, because that relates. Um, so, you know, uh, strength of giants for 25 area of effect for no gems is gone. You know, so sad. Everyone's upset. Um, so what it is now is the new strength of giants is area of effect one with range five. It's terrible. Um, and then you have two other tiers. You have a gift of giant strength, which is three AOE for 15, but no gems, a very high fatigue. So you're not going to get many, many casts off of this. And then you have the this one. So this is like smaller than the old Strength of Giants. And now it requires a gem. Um, so <coughs> it's a lot harder to give a large AoE strength buff to your troops how, than it was in Dominions 5. However... Because of how strength scaling has changed in Dominions 6, it now gives more effective damage to archers. So what it means is that in Dominions 5, plus 4 strength for most archers would only mean 1 additional damage because it was 1 third. Now there were uh, special cases like for example if an archer had 11 strength, he adds 4, he's now doing two extra damage because of how one-third scaling worked, right? But now, you're guaranteed to have two extra damage to your bows because of how they've changed strength scaling. So plus four will always give you plus two. <coughs> okay, so now uh, there's one other spell I need to talk about. Oops. Here we go. Um, under Alteration and Nature, Eagle Eye Warriors. Um, so this gives you precision tw at 20 area of effect. Uh, but this is worse than the air version because the air version is available at Enchantment 4 and it only requires 2 air. This one is Higher Paths and it comes later in Alteration. Um, but, you know, some nations lost their air, so this is all they can rely on. For example, men, they used to be a very big air and nature um, nation. But now, the air has been largely taken away from them in exchange for glamour. So now you have a, if you were a man, your only way to cast precision will be with this eagle eye warriors if you want to. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about defensive spells and how they've changed. And, and what I mean by this is uh, spells that defend against arrows. Okay, so now you have, if you remember in Dominions 5, you had an arrow fend uh, that would cast battlefield wide um, at alteration 6 for at 3 and it required 3 air to cast and it was battlefield wide so you know people would say that one of the reasons that archers sucked in Dominions 5 is it was easy to cast arrow fend by the mid game now you know I don't necessarily agree with that statement because first of all Air three, or not very many nations had air to begin with, and secondly, you you know you had to always have a guy in that uh, accompanying an army to cast arrowfend, um, and you know there were nations that had stealthy archers or flying archers, and they could surprise your enemy by just arriving in a battle when they didn't expect it, and they had no one to cast arrowfend. So I disagree with the. Uh, Argument in Dominions 5 that archers were no val not valuable once Arrowfend was researched. But anyway, I digress. Uh, let's go back to Dominion 6. Um, so now it's changed. So Arrowfend still exists, but it's now pushed back to Alteration 7, and now it's Air 4. So it's harder to cast. Um, you need to be, you know, Air 4 is very hard to find on most nations to begin with. You would need to be air three, and then overcast with the gem, and then so, and then have another gem. So, an air three with two gems can cast arrowfend, but you know most nations don't even have access to an air three. Um, so I would argue that it's arrowfend is less effective than it was in Dominion six or Dominion five, but there are now lower level spells. So here we go. Um, at level three, you have protective winds. So this is a AOE three. Uh, but remember, what AOE means in Dominions is that this is three individual squares, not three by three. So this is not a three by three box of nine. It is just three individual squares will be affected by air shield 80. Um, but what this allows you to do is to, um, without gems, put air uh, air shield over like uh, very valuable mages or units that or other archers for example that are vulnerable to being hit by arrows so this is like a valuable spell that requires no gems and is available early and then arrow ward you know this is like as much as the old arrow fend but now it's only 20 aoe um okay And then Storm, you know, Storm used to be under Evocation. Now it's under Alteration. And, you know, it still does the 50% missiles lost. However, now Storm can be countered by Wind Guide. So Storm is less effective um, than it was in Dominions uh, 5 at stopping archery. But, of course, your opponent has to have ability to cast Wind Guide. And, you know, most nations are not Air Nations. Okay, and uh, one last thing before we conclude the video. Um, so we cannot talk about defensive spells without also talking about how all of the spells that give protection have been debuffed in Dominion 6. Um, so for example, uh, let's just look at Bark Skin, for example. Um, here we go. So you remember in Dominions 5, this gave 10 protection, now it only gives 7. Uh, stone skin uh, used to give 15, now it gives 10. And then iron skin used to give 20, and now it gives 13. So, you know, and then you have the very large versions, um, like a Marble Warriors. You know, now you're giving only 10. And then you have a, was it, Army of lead is only 13 right instead of 20 for the whole battlefield 
So what this means is that it's harder to stack a ton of protection on all of your units. So what it means is that although this does not directly relate to archery, by making all of the protection spells worse, it means that it is there's a longer period of the game, in my opinion, that archers can still damage uh, mundane units or other units. Um, sorry, let me rephrase that. There is a longer period of the game in which archery can defeat uh, protection. So I think overall, my conclusion is that yes, archers are still maybe not the best units, but they are more effective for a larger part of the game and I think that it's harder to counter archery in Dominion 6 than it was in Dominions 5. Okay, so I'm sure I missed something. Uh, I definitely missed something in my other videos. So if you have anything you would like to add uh, or corrections, please comment. And I uh, appreciate your uh, watching. Thank you.